Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This is The Sim Hanger. My name is Mark. Thanks for joining me today. And today I've got some good news. No, in fact, I think it's great news. And that is my favorite head and eye tracking peripheral, the Toby Eye Tracker 5, is now natively supported and fully integrated into Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. However, it's only available currently in Sim Update 3, which is currently in beta. So if you're not in that, you're going to have to wait until Sim Update 3 is formally released before you can utilize it. If in the interim you've been using one of the workarounds, I did a video earlier in the year where I showed a workaround using the Toby Gaming Hub where you don't need that anymore, you can uninstall that. And I know that OpenTrack was also a popular workaround. Again, if you want to use the support natively in the sim and you don't want to risk conflicts, you need to fully uninstall OpenTrack which may include deleting one or two files off your hard drive, so make sure you do a full uninstall. The implementation and use of the Toby Eye Tracker 5 within Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 is exactly the same as it was for the 2020 version, so all you need running uh, with the sim is Toby Experience. Let's just jump into the cockpit and as you can see, we're in the beautiful cockpit of Black Square's Starship. Now, I'm not going to run through the full setup, install and what have you. I've already done that in previous videos. But if you're relatively new to the Toby Eye Tracker 5 and would like more information, then check out these videos. I'll put them up here and I'll leave a link to them in the notes below the video. The setup is exactly the same for 24 as it is for the 20 version, so follow those and it will get you up and running. The only important thing really is make sure you do the two essential keybinds. One is Alt 7, which is toggle head tracking on and off. Currently I'm moving my head, the cockpit's not moving because I've toggled it off. And Alt 8, which is to recenter your position. Uh, when initially starting, don't forget you need to do that twice. So what do you get? You get exactly the same as 2020, all six degrees of uh, movement. Let's just demo those quickly. Alt 7, head tracking is now enabled. You get pitch so you can look up and you can look down. You get your, which is looking left. Or looking right very smooth I hope it's coming through um, like that on the video you also get roll this is something I don't use very much I often have this disabled actually because it's not a movement you'd normally do in the cockpit really um, but I've enabled it simply to show you that it's there and then the other three you've got the ability to physically move left or right you can move up or down and of course and most importantly you can move in and zoom my settings um, I've allowed for a little bit of a dead zone so that uh, if I move my head very slightly like this I'm not getting too much movement in the sim and so on so we've got all the amount of movement now how much your view changes etc the speed at which it changes and so on is all done in the settings so let's jump into the settings and have a look at what we've got I'll just disable head tracking quickly there we are disable takes me back to the center view settings head over to the controls menu there's the Toby if you have a look, of course, and you're looking for a sign, you're going to find nothing here at all. It's all here. Click on the cog, select hardware settings, and here are all our settings. So let's just run through these quickly. We've got head versus eye tracking. I've currently got it set to one, which is uh, all the way up. What that does, it means that I'm not using the eye tracking uh, I'm only using the head tracking. If I move this slider back, it changes the proportion in which your uh, head tracking 
or your eye tracking has an influence on the amount of movement in the cockpit. This one here, eye tracking responsi responsiveness affects the the sensitivity of your eye tracking and how far your eyes will change. So we can just do a quick demo here. So I've pulled back from from 100% or 1%. Um, let's come back here. That will reduce the amount of um, head tracking. And I've now enabled by increasing the responsiveness now of the eye tracking. So let's just jump back into the cockpit we can enable now I hope again that this is visible on the video but what I'm going to do now is show you the eye tracking I'm just going to move my eyes and not my head so I'm now going to look to the left now of course the, the camera's facing me and I'm facing the cockpit so all my movements will be opposite but I'm sure you get the gist so now I'm just going to look to the left and back to center. I'll look to the right, back to center. I can look up and I can look down and so on. I personally don't like a lot of eye tracking if you like when I'm in the cockpit I find it can be disorientating you can of course just have a small amount of eye tracking and I know some people who fly airliners like this where you've got something like that remember this is proportion of head and eye tracking this is the sensitivity or the speed at which your view will return to center so you could have that and have it right up like this so that with your eye tracking when you look somewhere look back your view would change almost immediately I hope that makes sense I personally don't like the eye tracking um, so I set it to one and I set the eye tracking responsiveness to zero so I've effectively disabled eye tracking head tracking uh, sensitivity pitch and your uh, pitch is looking up and down your is looking left to right and uh, you can see I've got it on one what that means is that my head movement is a one-to-one -one ratio with the cockpit so if I look 90 degrees my view in the cockpit will change 90 degrees now if you wanted to increase that you wanted to say get a 90 degree view but you only wanted to move your head 45 degrees well you'd need to double the amount of in cockpit view change compared to head change so you would change that one to two and so on so I like a one-to-one -one. I'm not very often looking right behind me or anything like that um, and I can use camera views for that but of course if I moved that to two well I could do that center stabilization is basically like a, a bit of a dead zone I showed you where I was moving my head I don't want my view changing with just very tiny small amounts of head movement and you'll be amazed at just how much or how many times you're doing small adjustments to your head in the cockpit and again that can be a little bit disorientating uh, this is a matter of personal preference I would recommend anything from about 0.2 to about 0.35 thereabouts any more than that and you're going to find you're having to move your head too far before your view changes and then your view is going to snap one way or another head tracking sensitivity roll this again really just determines how much your head moves when you move your head not your body your head side to side uh, again it's not something I would use a lot of and quite often I'll have this set at 0.5 or as I mentioned earlier I won't have it on at all head tracking sensitivity position this covers the other three um, uh, fields of movement we've covered pitch we've covered your and we've covered roll this one is covers the remaining three which is if we move up or down our zoom where we move in and out and it also uh, what's the other one yes when we move left or right so 
that covers all three of those and again it's a matter of personal preference head tracking auto center i have that off it doesn't work for me what this means is if you are say looking to your right and you hold that for quite a time it will slowly start bringing you back the speed at which it does will depend on the setting that you have will bring you back to center not something that i'm comfortable with uh, experiment see if you like it but for most flight simming applications i would recommend zero so those are the settings my only disappointment and i hope that toby's going to address this let's face it the toby i tracker 5 is, is an expensive peripheral in comparison to its competition and there are no curves for any of these settings here and certainly for pitch and your roll and the other three we would like a curve so that we could adjust the amount of movement and get finer granularity and resolution on those tiny changes of head movement that we want and i hope that they that will be forthcoming in the not too distant future now these settings here of course are my settings and they suit me and my setup but your setup may be very different and so you're going to have to experiment with the settings depending on where you have your and how you have your toby eye tracker 5 installed for me i have a fairly large monitor it's a 48 inch uh, asus uh, oled monitor and uh, i'm in a sim rig a next level sim rig as you can see and i'm f i'm quite a distance away so i'm using the tripod mounting system which is an optional extra it's normal that it's mounted uh, at the base of your monitor something like that um, if you are interested in the tripod and i'll leave a picture of my particular install just to give you an idea of how it is you'll find it under the accessories it's the tripod and it's an additional purchase so for those of you that have already got the toby eye tracker 5 that'll get you up and running if you're thinking about investing in the toby eye tracker 5 well it is the most expensive head and eye tracker on the market at the moment um, i'll throw the price up here very often um, toby have uh, promotions and you can get up to 15 percent off also below i've got an affiliated link uh, that gives you a five percent discount if you're interested use that if you want to just make sure you enter the promo code so is it worth it well in my opinion it is but it is very expensive and the reason i say it's worth it is I've experimented with a lot of different head trackers, track IR and so on. The Toby Eye Tracker 5 is very robust. It works in all different types of light conditions and um, is very tolerant of very dim and very brightly lit rooms, which some of the others are not. There's no wearables. You don't have to wear any reflectors or anything of that nature. And the resolution that's provided by the two IR sensors and the cameras really is second to none and that gives you a much smoother feel and look around so I do recommend it well I hope that gets you up and running thank you very much as always for joining me stay well look after yourselves I'll see you all again very soon and ciao for now